Good day, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about John Deere's biggest row crop tractor in the 1930s. This is the Unstyled Model G. We love making all kinds of tractor history videos, as well as farming videos. So if you're into that and don't mind hitting subscribe, it really helps the channel a lot. Anyways, let's get into the Model G. Without a doubt, the Model G is known for its size, weight, and incredible torque. It's also the predecessor to what would become of the 70, 720, and 730s. This was an absolute farming machine, and we're going to be covering some of its prototypes and what made John Deere decide to build this. We'll also be covering the rare ones, like the low radiator Gs, and covering what this all means, as well as looking at changes that were made to the G. And was this tractor a success? Let's find out. One cool fact about how John Deere named this the Model G was they'd use every other letter on previous production equipment all the way up until E, so the plan was to call this thing the F, but to avoid confusion with farm wall machines at the time, they decided to call it the G. But before it was the Model G, in 1935, the experimental ones were called the KX. The Model G would roll off the assembly line in Waterloo, Iowa in May of 1937 designed to bring more horsepower to the bigger farmers. It would feature a 412 cubic inch engine that put out 35 horsepower on the belt. To accommodate this larger displacement engine, John Deere would have to widen the frame around the block and head to make it fit. Pistons would be 6 and an eighth by 7 inch stroke. This engine would put out 975 RPMs, the same as the Model A. Many parts on this G were sized up A parts, and a couple notable ones would be the steering pedestal as well as bigger rear wheels. The first ones off the assembly line would start with serial number 1000, and it was at serial number 4250 where John Deere would make a change. Deere would realize that the radiators equipped on these early Model Gs were too small and causing overheating problems. And this is where you get the famous rare low radiator Gs. With only 3,250 of these low radiator Gs built, it was already rare in its own sense, but what would make it even more rare is most of these were retrofitted with bigger radiators. It's thought that over 2,000 of these were for surely recalled, but there's no exact number on how many actually got updated. To solve this overheating problem, John Deere would add an extra 2 gallons of capacity to the new radiators. In late 1938, John Deere would also update the upper radiator pipes, making them bigger for more flow. One of the biggest advantages to the Model G was plowing. It was capable of pulling a 314 plow, which if you don't know, that's three bottoms at 14 inches apiece. This meant it was able to compete with the John Deere Model D, while also bringing you the row crop advantages of a tractor. The Model G was also able to pull a four row planter, as well as a two row corn picker. When the Model G was tested at the University of Nebraska, it was able to pull 4,000 pounds at 2.37 miles per hour. It'd feature a familiar 4-speed transmission with a top speed of 6 miles an hour. It would release on steel wheels, but just like the other models in John Deere's line, it would also have the option for rubber tires. The G would weigh in at 4,085 pounds, which was 302 pounds heavier than the Model A. It's said that in the early 30s, John Deere considered making this Model G, but the focus with the Great Depression was on smaller and more economical tractors. But by the time of the G's release, the Great Depression was starting to wind down and farmers were ready to farm more acres. Compared to the Model A's and B's, the G would only get one variant, the standard row crop narrow front. This, however, would be changed in the late 40s when the John Deere G would get some extra variants. Another thing that sets the G apart from the A's and B's is the drawbar support. On the G's, you have a more square drawbar support. With the A's, it's more of a triangle shape. In total, there'd be 10,684 of these unstyled Model G's produced. The final asking price on these unstyled tractors would be around $1,100. In March of 41, you'd see the G get rubber tires as standard equipment. Henry Dyfris would be appointed to Deere's board in 1938, and he'd be tasked with styling the tractors, giving them a whole new look and an update. The Model A's and B's would see the update first, and it wouldn't be until February 20th of 1942 that the Model G would get its new look. When the A's and B's were styled, the John Deere G was the only one to retain the iconic look of the side-by-side -side muffler and air intake. 
the US would be involved in World War II, which would cause some problems for the G. You'd see rationing as well as price regulations going into effect by the US government. John Deere had been hard at work improving the Model G and had a brand new six-speed transmission that they wanted to put in it. John Deere debated on whether or not to use this new transmission, but after years of design, they decided to go ahead and use it. Besides the updated transmission and the new styling look, you'd also get a slight bump in horsepower bringing it up to 35 horse at the belt and 27 at the drawbar. It was at this time too, John Deere added the electric start to the Model G. With US government restrictions on raising the price, John Deere would have to make it a whole new model, calling it the GM. The M would stand for modernized, and the US government would approve that John Deere could raise the price. These GMs would weigh in quite a bit heavier as well, coming in at 5,300 pounds. John Deere would halt production on the Model GM for over a year to focus on the war effort. These Model GMs were produced from 19 1942 to 1947 with 8,764 rolling off the assembly line. Once 1948 would roll around, you'd see the most redefined and best version of the Model G. We'd get a big bump in the comfort department, going away from the old steel seat to the new padded cushion seat, also moving the battery under the seat. We'd also finally get some different variants of the Model G. We'd see the Model GN added to the lineup. With 1,500 of these produced, it was a single, narrow front wheel. We'd also get over 4,600 of the GW, which was the wide front version of the Model G. Last but not least, one of the more rare variants of the Model G was the GH. This was a G high crop with a wide front. We'd also see the most powerful G release, coming in at 36 horsepower at the drawbar and 39.8 at the belt. With the final asking price of 2600 in 1953, this thing was still a powerhouse on farms across America. The Model G has also been used numerous times today to be turned into a pulling tractor. With the G's bigger size, it's set up perfect for adding modifications. Many of these pullers have had power blocks installed on them, as well as increasing the piston size. Horsepower wise, people have claimed to get 75 to 100 horse out of these puller tractors. Although the John Deere G might not have been the most produced John Deere row crop at the time, it definitely left its staple in the farming community. The G's that sell today seem to bring more of a price than the A's and B's. So I'm curious, if you own a John Deere G, or what experience you have running them, let me know down in the comments. That's been a short history on the John Deere Model G. I want to thank you guys all for watching and supporting the channel. We'll catch you in the next video.